Hey guys, welcome to Pellets and Pits. Hey, today is all about a showdown throwdown. We're taking three pellet grills, three slabs of ribs, and seeing which one comes out on top. We're using the Ironwood XL, we're using the Weber Searwood, we're using the uh, Pit Boss Titan. No idea what the results are gonna be. Let's get started. All right, so today's a big day. There's no doubt about it. We get asked a lot, uh, just like we do on the griddle side on the Flat Top King, which one do you like best? Which one performs best? You know, you can name the question we've been asked. So the good news about today is we're gonna do a rib competition, okay? And basically it's just we're gonna put the ribs on there. I've already decided at 250, no wrap, because that's how I enjoy the ribs. We've got three slabs of ribs. We're gonna use B&B &B pellets, okay? I have drained all the pellets out from the hoppers. We're gonna be able to show you that. I got the Traeger, the Weber, and the Pit Boss for free. I'm not affiliated with them. I just happen to have a YouTube channel. They sent me the products to try out for reviews and or cooking on it. I don't care who wins. I'm not invested in the companies. I don't even I don't even think I have links to the grills, right? So I don't care who wins. It's, it, it has no affiliation with me at all. I like something about each one, and I don't like something about each one. You know, there's a column, pros and cons. So with that being said and out of the way, I hope we can enjoy the video. I hope that the results come out in a way that are 100% guaranteed. What uh, I hope the results come out in a way that like we have a true winner. We did a video in the past where Traeger went up against the Lone Star Grills. I was surprised because of my biased personal beliefs that the Traeger held suit with the Lone Star. Granted, I did not use wood chips and I didn't use all the features for both grills because both grills didn't have the same features. So I felt like it was unfair to use a feature if the other grill doesn't have it. So this is what I've done. I've taken a perfect unit of measure, okay? We all know that ribs should go on the top rack when it comes to pellet smoking. I disagree, but you know what? I get told all the time. So there's my finger in the back. That's where it comes up to. So there's the top grate, okay? Let's move to the Weber. You only have one option with a Weber. And so it sits just a hair higher. My finger comes to there. It's a hair higher. You know what? I can't do anything about it. And then when it comes to the pit boss, these racks are adjustable. And I think if you keep it right there, you're a hair lower, but you're closer to the Traeger than you are to the Weber. So I think we're gonna be fine. Okay, so middle rack the whole way. You guys can just see how much bigger the middle rack is here than it is on the other ones. That's one nice thing about it. We're not gonna get into what I like and don't like. All right, here we go. That's your auger. Your auger's down there. Your auger's down here. I'm gonna fill each one roughly up with 20 pounds. I don't really think there's any importance to go longer. I will have half a bag left over if my math does me correctly. Uh, that way in case, like for example, the pit boss might use more just cause it's bigger area. So it might say that it needs more pellets, but I've got that reserve in case I need it. Once I put the pellets in there, what I thought was I was gonna turn each grill to 250, let them run for about 30, 45 minutes. Uh, that way it burns whatever pellet flavor is in the auger out. And so that way we're burning pure B&B &B pellets. That's the best I can do. I'm not gonna empty the auger just for this video. You might wanna make sure that your pellet dump is closed completely before you add the pellets. I have no idea how long it took. I'm just telling you that the Weber hit 250 first, uh, followed by the Traeger, it's 243. And then the Pit Boss is at 221, 220. I just thought that was interesting. Alrighty, we mentioned our, um, basically our base layer for barbecue all the time. We call it Texas rub, just kind of like a standard basic rub. This is it that I always have, but I'm gonna make a fresh batch just to, that way we can try to Hopefully somebody out there will say he tried. At least he tried to make it even. So this is the deal. No matter what you do measurement you have, one, two, one, one, and one. I'm gonna repeat that process probably two more times. Just give that a mix.
All right, so here I have two racks of ribs from this pack. It's from Costco, Swift Meats. Um, we've actually done a rib video before where we did uh, naked, aluminum full, and butcher paper. Uh, unanimously, me and my dad both like the naked. That's why we're doing naked today. We don't really trim our ribs. Some people get offended by it. I just can't imagine it. We've never had rib left over. Like, I like the chewiness of the burn ends. I call them burn ends, like the flaps and stuff like that. Reminds me of jerky. I will trim stuff like this off that's just like a little piece of bone. But other than that, I don't care if this gets overcooked, right? If you don't want that piece when somebody serves it to you, then get a piece right here. But I might choose that piece. So anyways, like I said, we don't take the membranes off. I just score it. So let's go like this. My dad was surprised that I don't remove the membrane. He always has. And when he tasted it, he couldn't even taste the difference. So... No binder today. We're just gonna go straight naked. I wanna to try to taste as much smoke as possible. Alrighty, I'm gonna do this rib the same exact way. Alrighty, it's been roughly about a, about 40 minutes to 50 minutes since we turned the pellet smokers on. These been sitting out for about 20 minutes. We won't check on these until I would say probably at least two hours. So that's going to be uh, 125. Two hours on the dot. I am going to. Whew, looking good. That looks good. Just check for temp. I'm going to go just right in the middle. Somewhere right through there. So 165. And then we're just going to lightly spritz it. Whew. A little vinegar, apple cider, because we like it. Moving on to the sear wood. What do we say, 165? To 169. Okay. Looking good. Probably right there in the middle. This has only been on for two hours. Wow, we're at the Oh, on that one. My goal was roughly five hours. No way that stays on the pellet smoker for five hours. Um, I don't really know how to keep this fair. One part of me wants to put a thermometer in there to see if it's running true to temp. For it to be that high in temp only at 250 for two hours seems kind of strange. I'm kind of like on the board with the Weber right here just for the simple fact of the time that it takes. And that's also cooking a hair hot, but not near as bad as the Pit Boss. So, so my Pit Boss smaller is right there in the middle. So I'm just gonna take this, aim it right there, just connect it. I just wanna double check my temps. I know it's. You know, if you really want to get technical, I think the wife's right. It kind of, that one rack of rib looks a little bit smaller than per se like this one. But 
I still don't think it should be running that much ahead, considering that's probably a normal slab of ribs. God, that looks good too. So far, I think even the color on the pit boss is lacking. I think uh, it's neck and neck between these two, just by just by pure appearance. Um, that that one looks really good. Alrighty, our thermometer is stabilized about 262 to 263. So this is reading 250, 10 degrees. I'm okay with that. Now that I've done it on this one, let's go ahead and just do the rest of them. Alrighty, push that way back there. Close that, let this stabilize and see what happens. Alrighty, we stabilized about 241, almost exactly. Like it hasn't really moved at all. Maybe 242. Now granted, these are not at great levels. I understand that, but these are next to the next to the thermometers, and I feel like that's more important because that's what's telling your computer to um, to operate. Thermometers right there, you can see the wicker basket style. I hear you, stop. And we stabilize kind of like in that mark right there. So that's basically the biggest gap that we have on all of our uh, temperature zones. That's a 20 degree difference. Um, but I mean, I don't know if it affects the cooking or anything, but I just thought I'll show it to you. I really don't have a, I don't care. Like I, it really doesn't bother me one bit. So, I mean, I don't even know if we should now take the temperatures and put them next to the actual ribs. But anyways, that just gives you an idea. That's all it does. Three hours in, I am just going to rotate the ribs. And then while the lid is open, I'm just going to give another spritz. That dang color right there just looks absolutely phenomenal. Golly. Let's see the rib. Same way. <coughs> <same. coughs> There's a lot of smoke back here. Yeah. There we go. Them things look good too. Nice mahogany. Man, that looks good. Alrighty, we're four hours in. We've hit about 200 to 204, depending on where you're gonna probe it at. And then we're going to, I'm gonna do all of them the same, okay? So we're just gonna spritz a little bit. And then I'm just going to tightly wrap in foil. I'm gonna set these in my oven about 145 degrees. Um, and now I'll just let it show you the temp. Still a little tight. So see the difference? So we got a good ways to go. They've actually caught up with each other. It's interesting. Now they're running on the same pace. I'm gonna spritz these one more time. Oh. Alrighty, five and a half hours in, we're going to go ahead and turn it off. We're looking at roughly the same temperature if not almost exact. That's a good looking slab of ribs right there. Foil this one. Ooh. Looks like a nice slab of ribs too. I'd be happy with that. All right, so now that we have our ribs done, remember that other rack is in the oven. 
it's warming, right? It's just on warm. I'm gonna let these cool down uh, for about 30, 45 minutes. And then we're gonna bring them all out. I do know that during this process, that one got pulled early. So, you know, it's gonna be a little bit unfair for color, maybe even on flavor, but I mean, what else do you do? You know, you go through there and like maybe weigh the rib and make sure that each rib is done. I'll just grab a pack of three ribs. That's probably my biggest thing of looking at like how you could understand it's not even. But we're still going to try them, still going to taste them, and see what happens. So they'll all be, they've all been three wrapped in Lunafold. They're all going to three to be rested. Obviously, that one's been rested a little bit longer. And they've all been spritzed right at the very end. Anything I try to do, moving them wise or spritzing them wise, I did all the exact same. All the same pellets, all the same temperature. The other alternative I had was once I noticed that each grill had its own unique up or down when it came to the temperature, I could have jumped, uh, adjusted my temperature on the smoker, but I decided to do it at 250. Let the unit do its thing, set at 250. I could adjust it to where my thermometer that I feel confident in showed 250. And so I could move my dials up and down, but I put each smoker on 250 and let it ride. From my point of view is exactly what I figured. This looks a little bit light in color because we had to pull it earlier than compared to the Weber versus the Traeger. My first reaction is they look exactly the same. I really can't tell the difference between this one and this one. Not, not at all. I don't know if the camera picks up a different color skew, but. Oh, the camera does pick up something a little bit different. Okay. On camera, this one looks darker, but I see what you're saying. In person, they look the same. Okay. And then does this one look lighter on camera? Yes. Okay. Um, it's not significantly lighter, but it is lighter in color. You know, if you add another hour and a half to this, I think it would look pretty close to this. So this is what we're gonna do. I am gonna cut the middle rib out of each and that's gonna be our tester. So I'm just gonna follow that bone straight down. We'll skip a bone. So you have a little bit of meat and I have a little bit of meat. So there is the Traeger. No, nope. uh, Pit Boss. Woo. And here is the Traeger. All right, first things first, can you tell a difference in the smoke ring? I can't. No. Considering I do even... think this is like a smaller rib. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. For the color, I mean, for the texture, for the tenderness, I think it's going to be relative to what you guys like. Um, so I'm going to bite all three. And then we can go, and I'll let you bite all three. Okay. Deal? Yep. I gotta tell you, we don't do it often, but just having good old salt and pepper and garlic on a rib is something magical. I wish there was more of it. Is pepper heavy? I mean, that's a dang good rib. Mmm. I think they're all great. We're gonna give the world leading barbecue expert a chance. I want you to take a bite of all three <gasps> and see if you can determine any difference at all. Okay. This is our oldest daughter. <laughs> do I just take a bite? That's the bone, right? Just do here. If you feel something hard, that's the bone. <laughs> well, I know, but you might make it gristle too. I need a palate cleanser. A palate <laughs> cleanser. <laughs> I'm gonna move these over here so she can try them out. You can tell she's a chef's daughter. Needs a palate, like needs see. a palate cleanser. Yeah. I thought all along that these manufacturers are built to really dial in a certain temperature, 250, 275, somewhere through there, with our algorithms and smoke. We use the same pellets, and I don't think I could really tell, honestly, that much of a difference. Do you think you can tell that much of a difference? I think these two taste the same, but I think that one tastes more like tender and like juicier. But I, the f I because agree. it has more fat. Yeah. Uh -oh. That yeah. centerpiece. Yeah. That came off the trigger. And that was going to be my next thing. Looking back, I think the pit boss might have got a little bit of a bad rap because of the rib that actually went on there. Looking back, I maybe should have bought more slabs of ribs, but I just thought a three pack would have been the right thing to do. Um, the, because it was smaller. Yeah. The it looks like it was smaller. Yeah. The one on the tray was like a perfect set of ribs. The Weber was like a really good close, but the one on the pit boss probably didn't give it justice. But with that being said, with the amount of time that was on there, it held its own. 
I feel like the actual smoke flavor, you could not tell a difference between the three. I think where the difference came in is like you said, that the, um, the pip off slab was smaller, wasn't as fatty as the Traeger slab. The Traeger slab had a lot of good fat in there. And that's, yeah. what, that's what we like. Yeah. <laughs> we like the fat. So, but if you're talking about just smoke flavor, I think you could not tell a difference in the smoke flavor. Yeah. So, and we found that out when we did the Traeger versus the Lone Star Grills, you know, but we didn't use the wood chips and Lone Star Grills, but let's, the Traeger can't use wood chips. I mentioned that before, so I didn't think that was a fair comparison. But it just goes back to, I think typically the flavor is pretty neutral. It's about the features, about the price point, about your brand loyalty or what brand you want. I wouldn't say loyalty, but brand supportiveness. Um, I will say this. Through the video, we found that we thought the Traeger smoked so much more yes. than the rest of them. Like smoke was pouring out of the Traeger at all times. It seemed like the Pit Boss had the least amount of smoke and the Weber came in second. But it did not yield a different result. So whatever algorithm they have to burn the pellets through the burn pot, who knows. But it just goes to show you for three slab of ribs for three pellet grills. Honestly, there's not that much of it. There, I don't think there's... You get one beer in you and nobody cares. So if you guys are interested, have any more comments, I think I'm gonna do a comparison head to head with all three. So give you guys the features, kind of break it down, what I truly think about them to give you guys an example of like, you know, what each one offers and doesn't offer. We can do that too. But because of you guys, we've done this video. We've had several people ask, hey, Weber versus Traeger, Traeger versus Weber. So we decided to do them all three at one time. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends. Peace. Yeah, that's a juicy rib. <laughs> that's a good rib. They're all good ribs.